Welcome back and welcome to part 4 of this animated stylized forest meadow blender tutorial series. If you haven't seen the other parts then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So in this part we're going to be using geometry nodes to place all the different trees and the foliage and the different plants around the 3D scene. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files you can get that on my Gumroad store in my Patreon page with the links in the description. Now if you're more of a beginner to geometry nodes and you'd like to learn all the basic fundamentals of geometry nodes then a tutorial series which you might be interested in is my geometry nodes for complete beginners tutorial series. And so that is a six part tutorial series and it's completely free on my YouTube channel and throughout the tutorial series as well as learning the basics of geometry nodes you'll also learn how to create this flower generator where you can draw curves and then flowers will be generated on the curves so if you'd like to check out that tutorial playlist the links will be in the description so let's select the ground object and we're going to go over here to the geometry nodes workspace now if for some reason you don't have the geometry nodes workspace you can scroll over here and you can click on the plus to add a new workspace and then you can go to here to general and add geometry nodes the other way to add the geometry nodes workspace is to click here on the corner when there's the crosshair and you can click and drag out to split the window and then if you click here to change the editor type you can change this to the geometry node editor so however you want to get to the geometry node editor I've added this geometry nodes tab so I will go over here so I have the 3d viewport right here and then the geometry nodes editor right over here so I'm going to click on new to add new geometry nodes and when I added new geometry nodes you can see right over here on the modifiers it's added new geometry nodes now I want to rename this so I'm gonna call this grass and then right here I'm also gonna call this grass so we're now gonna be creating the geometry node setup which will place the grass all over the scene so to start off I'm gonna to go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the distribute points on faces we'll add this distribute points on faces right here and then you can see that it's going to show you these little dots here just for where the points are and this random here I want to change this to Poisson disk instead and then when we add the grass it'll be kind of laggy if there's lots of grass so for now the density max I'll turn this way down to like a 0.1 so there aren't quite as many of them let's also go to the add menu and to actually add the grass on to the ground I need to add the instance on points node so instance on points drop it here now you can see that the plane has disappeared that's because we need to add up the original geometry so I'll go to the add menu we need to search for the join geometry and we'll put this here after the instance on points and the geometry you can go here into the join geometry so that way we're mixing back the original geometry back into the final setup so you can actually see it on the ground now to actually add in the grass we can go to the add menu and we're gonna search for a collection info because the collection info will give us the information of whatever collection we choose so here on the collection we're going to choose the grass collection so this is going to add the grass models and then the instance we can put that into the instance on the instance on points and now you can see that there's little bits of grass all over the 3d scene and all over that environment now there's a problem with this and that is that all of the grass models are together so to make it so that it's going to use each individual object we're going to click on the separate children the reset children and the pick instance and so this way now we just have random grass models all around and if I press the space bar to play you can see they have that animation there of the wind so that's great now on this distribute points on faces there is a distance minimum and a distance maximum so the distance minimum I'm gonna turn this up to like a 0.1 and this way there will be a little bit of space in between each blade of grass and so there won't be too many blades of grass which are overlapping and then you can turn the density max up if you want there to be more of them but if you turn it up too high then it will start to get laggy so for now I'm gonna keep it way down and we're actually gonna do some weight painting to just paint where we want the grass to be and then we can turn the density max up before we do that though, I do wanna change a few things. So I wanna add a random scale and a random rotation just to make them look a bit more random. Because right now you can see like this blade of grass here and this blade of grass here because they're the same one. They have the same rotation and the same scale and like these two look almost exactly the same. So I wanna make each blade of grass randomly rotated around. So to do this, I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the random value node. Let's drop this here. Now I want to put this into the rotation but but I don't want to rotate the Y and the X, I just want to rotate the Z to rotate it around. So let's click on the float here and I'm going to change it to vector. This will break up the values that we have X, Y, and Z values. So now the value can go into the rotation of the instance on points. 
Now here on the maximum value, I wanna start by turning these all to zero, and then we can just turn up this value here to rotate it around. Now you could turn up to a really big number like a thousand, so it's super random, but if you actually click on this value here and type TAU for tau, that is going to generate the number which will make sure that it's perfectly random and goes all the way around. So you could of course turn this way up, but just changing it to tau, TAU, that will make sure that it'll be totally random. And then I do think it would be nice just to give it a tiny little bit of Y rotation and X rotation, just to make it look a tiny bit more random. So on the maximum here on the X and Y, I'll turn these both to a 0.1. One is a bit too much, it's gonna to rotate too much, so just turn these both to a 0.1 so that each blade of grass is slightly rotated. And now that looks much more random. Now I also wanna have a random scale so that some are bigger and other ones are smaller. So I'm gonna click on the random value and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And I can hit the back space and that is going to reset that node and we can put the value into the scale so now we have a minimum and a maximum value so the minimum value is how small they can be and then the maximum value is how big they can be so on the minimum I'll turn this to like a 0.5 so they can be half the size so you can see some of them are much smaller but on the maximum here I'll turn this to like a 0.8 so that some of them are a bit bigger so again that just makes it look much more random and then of course we can turn up the density factor if we want to but now I'm going to do some weight painting because because you can see this plane of grass is really big. And so if I just turn this way up, there's gonna to be tons of extra grass, which you can't actually see. And so it's just gonna make the scene more laggy. So I'm just gonna be weight painting where we can actually see it and where the camera can see the grass. So with the object selected, we're gonna click on object mode and we're gonna change this to the weight paint. So now in the weight paint mode, you can see we have a few different settings. There is this radius, which is gonna be the size of your brush. There's also a strength value. And then if you click here, you can choose between draw and there's a few different ones here. The main ones that you're gonna use is add to add values and then subtract to get rid of values. So let's just change this to add. So I can just click right here and that is going to add color. Now, if the color is blue, there won't be any grass, but if the color is red, there's gonna be lots of grass. Now, as I paint this, you can see it isn't really changing where the grass is. That is because I need to take this density factor value and we're gonna drag this into the group input right here. So just stick it in there. Now, why I'm doing this is so that right over here, the density factor is now gonna show up here as a custom value on the geometry nodes modifier. But instead of using a density factor to make it random, to make it more or less, I want to actually tell it to use the weight painting. So we're going to click on this button here, the input attribute toggle, and now we can actually choose this drop down. And if we click on the drop down, we can just choose the point group. Now I'm gonna be adding a few different point groups later in the tutorial series. So what I'm gonna do is rename this. So let's click over here to go to the object data properties. And here on the vertex groups, you can see it is called group. So I'm gonna double click on this and I'm gonna rename it to grass because this is gonna be the grass weight paint. So now if I go right back over here to the modifiers, click on the density factor, and we want to make sure we select the grass. So now if I start to paint this, this is going to be the grass weight paint, and you can see where I paint, that is where the grass is going to show up. So I can hit the zero on the numpad to go to the camera view, and I can just start to tap a few spots here and there, just so that I can kind of see where the camera is actually seeing, so something like that. And then I can just kind of go along here. And I wanna have some areas where there's lots of grass, so lots of red places, but then some other areas where there's no grass. And you can see like right over here, you're not even gonna be able to see this area. So if I click on the brush type here, I can change it to subtract, and then I can just draw here. I'm just using my mouse. You could use a drawing tablet if you want to, but I'm just gonna use my mouse and I can subtract that. And then I'll change this back to add. Now another shortcut key to make this a bit faster is hold down the control key as you're dragging and that'll subtract. And then if you just draw, that'll just add it. So I'm just gonna go along here and just kinda paint where I want the grass to be. And also like way here, really far in the background, the grass is gonna be really small and so it'll be kinda hard to see. So I don't need to add tons of grass way back here because again, it'll just lag the scene. I just wanna use the minimum amount of grass that we need. So I really don't need grass too far back there. 
All right, so that is pretty good for now. So now if I go back here to the geometry nodes, open this up, I can turn up this density max and make it much bigger. And I'm gonna turn it to a 15. I think 15 is pretty good, but you can see now the scene is looking a bit more laggy. So if it's too laggy, you could turn it down, um, but 15 is okay. And actually after we finish this geometry node setup, we can just hide it in the viewport and then that way it won't lag the scene, but it'll still render in the final render. Now I think 15 actually isn't quite enough. I want to maybe double it so this may make the scene a little bit laggy you might want to just press Control s to save your project again i'm going to turn it up to like a 30 so there's even more grass that looks a bit better let's click here on the weight paint and i can go back to object mode so now to make this so that it's not lagging the scene as much we can click on this little monitor icon here on the geometry nodes that's going to hide it from the view but if we render it it's still going to show up in the render if i press F12 to render. You can see the grass is still going to show up in the render even though it's hidden from the view. So I'll hit escape to go back to the 3D view. So now we're going to be adding the flowers onto the ground and we're pretty much going to be using the same setup. So what I'm going to do is click on add modifier here. We can search for the geometry nodes modifier. We'll add geometry nodes. Let's click on new to add new geometry nodes and then I can just rename this. So I'll rename this to flowers and call this flowers as well. Now, instead of recreating the entire geometry node setup, we can just copy the same setup. So what I'm gonna do first is click here to hide the flowers from our view so it won't get laggy. Then I can click here to select the grass geometry nodes. And I'll press the A key to make sure all of the geometry nodes are selected. And I'll hold down the shift key and just click on one of them to make sure one of them is active. I can now press control C, which is gonna copy the nodes. Then I can click on the flowers geometry nodes. I can press the A key to select these nodes and I'll delete them with the X key, and then I'll press Control V to paste the geometry nodes. Now, to make sure it's not very laggy, this density max, I'll turn it down to just like a 0.1, and then we can click on this button here just to show the geometry nodes. So now you can see it's showing us the geometry nodes, but it has the grass, so we just need to change this out, so we'll delete the grass, and then if we click here on the collection, we're going to choose the flowers instead. So now we have little flowers all over the meadow. And then I do want to change the size a little bit, so here on the random value, I'm going to make the minimum value a 0.8, so they're a bit bigger. And then the maximum value, I'm going to turn this up to a 0.9. And so you can see the minimum value and maximum value aren't that different because I don't want there to be a huge difference between all the flowers. All right, so that's pretty good. And if you want to, you can just show the grass and see how it looks like with the grass and the flowers. But I will hide the grass for now. And then when it comes to the amount of flowers, first we're going to be weight painting it and then we can turn up the density max if we want to add a bit more flowers. So let's just select the object again. We're going to go here from object mode and we're going to go to weight paint but then instead of painting the grass what I want to do is click over here to go to the object data properties and we're going to add a new vertex group so I'll click on the plus here to add a new group I can double click on this and I'll rename it to flowers so then to make sure that you're painting the flowers group you can click here and you can see you can choose between the grass or the flowers so now let's pretty much do the same thing but I want it to be in some different areas so I'm just going to start to paint around here and I'm going to paint wherever I want the flowers to be and then to make the flowers actually show up on the red area we want to do the same thing so the density factor is going to go into the geometry here and then if you go to the modifiers you can see the flowers we want to click on the input attribute toggle and then if we click on this here we want to choose the flowers here which is this weight paint so now wherever I paint that is where the flowers are going to show up so now let's just paint in a few little areas, a few clumps here and there where I want the flowers to be, but we're not gonna have it everywhere. So just a few spots here and there. All right, and a few flowers farther back. Go into the camera view, see how that is looking. Maybe a few more flowers right here, maybe up on this hill as well. All right, and also back here, we'll add a bunch more flowers back there. And it looks like right over here, we also should add some flowers. So right over there, kind of farther back there. All right, so now that I've kind of painted where I want the flowers to be, this density max, I'm going to turn this up to one so that there are quite a bit of flowers. And I do think that's just a little bit too many flowers. So on this density max, maybe I'll turn this down to like a 0.7, maybe even down to like a 0.5. That's a little bit better because I don't want there to be too many flowers. All right, that's pretty good. Let's go from weight paint back to object mode. We can see how that is looking. And I think really quick, I will go back to the weight paint. And then what I can actually do 
is just click on this button right here and this is going to hide the overlays and then I can hold down the control key and I can kind of get rid of a few flowers because some of these areas I think there's a bit too many flowers so just kind of go into the camera view maybe get rid of a few areas here because I do want a few areas where there's no flowers but then some spots where there's lots of flowers so something like that is a little bit better I like kind of having an empty spot there all right let's click on this button here to show the overlays again and we'll go back to object mode and I can save this with control S. So now we can hide the flowers again so it won't lag the viewport. So we'll click on this little monitor icon right here just to hide it. And actually we can collapse these modifiers by clicking on the arrow here just to make some of them smaller. So let's now create the trees and the plants. So let's click on add modifier. I'm gonna add one more geometry nodes. We'll add geometry nodes here. We'll click on new, and then I can just click on this to rename it, and I'll rename it trees and plants. And I'll give it the same name here, so trees and plants. All right, let's make this a bit bigger, and then we'll select these nodes. We'll hit X to delete them, and then what we can do is click on this here just to hide it, just so that it won't be laggy. We'll click here on the flowers. We're gonna select everything, and then we'll shift select one of the nodes to make sure there's an active node and I'll press control C to copy. Let's click on the trees and plants. So click on the trees and plants and press control V to paste it. And then here on the density max, we'll turn this to like a 0.1 so it's much smaller. And then here on the collection info, we're gonna delete this and we're gonna start by adding the trees. So we'll choose trees and then I can click here just to show it again so we can see it. All right, and you can see it's really dense. There's like a really dense forest. And so of course we don't want quite this many. We wanna make it look like kind of a forest meadow. And so we're gonna be again, weight painting. First of all, let's change the size of the trees. So on the minimum here, I wanna make it bigger. So I'll turn it to like a 1.4. And then on the maximum here, I'm gonna turn this to a 1.7. So all the trees are gonna be quite a bit bigger. And then also they're kind of going through each other. So this distance minimum, we need to turn this up so that there's more distance between each tree. So the distance min, I'm gonna turn that up to like a five. So now the trees aren't quite overlapping so much. And also this density max, let's turn it to like a 0 0.05 for now. So just half it, so 0 0.05, so there aren't quite as many trees. All right, we'll select the object and we'll click on object mode. We'll go to weight paint, and then we wanna add a new weight paint. So we'll click here on the object data properties. Let's click on the plus here to add a new group here or a new vertex group. We'll double click on this to rename it and we'll rename it to trees and plants. And then if you click right here, you can just make sure you're using the trees and plants. All right, so now we can just start to paint where we want it to be. So I'll just paint along here and then you can see the trees aren't on just the red area. So again, we need the density factor to go here into the extra socket. Then back over here on the modifiers, we wanna choose the input attribute toggle. And then again, we wanna click here and choose the trees and plants. So now if I go into the camera view, let's just make this really small and make this small so we have more space. We can just start to paint just where we want the trees and the plants to be. So we'll just paint along here. All right, paint along there. And you can see the tree isn't showing up. That's because there's a lot of space in between the trees. So you might need to paint kind of a bigger area before the tree will show up. All right, also like right over here, let's paint some areas here and kind of right over here and maybe paint a little bit behind the camera so that there's some shadows and it feels like it's more in the forest. All right, go into the camera view. That's looking pretty good, but I do want a few open areas. So that's why I'm kind of leaving that big open area there. And then also like way back here, let's paint a lot more because I do want there to be a lot of trees back here to make it look more like it's a forest. And I might add some more here and some more back there. All right, and also right over here, paint some more. So it feels more like it's in a forest. Maybe just add a tiny bit more like right over here. So there's another tree. All right, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll get rid of some places here so that this part kind of has a bit of a larger clearing. So that is pretty good. Now I also wanna add the plants and I actually just wanna add the plants within the same vertex group. So what I'm gonna do is actually add the plants with the same geometry node setup. So what I'm going to do is click and drag to box select like all of these nodes here and I'll press control shift D so control shift D will duplicate the nodes but keep the wires plugged up and I'm actually going to drag these down here and then I'll select these nodes and I'm going to drag them up and let's just drag the join geometry right down here. So select these nodes and bring them up here. And with these nodes selected, I'll press Control J just to join them into a frame to keep the nodes nicely organized. Let's also drag these geometry nodes right back over here. So then these nodes here, these are all the tree nodes. 
So if I click on the frame, I can press F2 to add a label and I can just call this trees. Then these nodes down here, I can press Control J to join them together into a frame just to keep them nicely organized. And these are going to be the plants. So if I press F2 to add a label, I can call this plants. And then right here on the trees, we'll delete this, get rid of the collection info. And here on the drop down, we're going to choose the plants instead. So now what I want to do is join them all up together. So instead of using multiple join geometries, we want this instance on points to be going into this join geometry right here. And then this join geometry we don't need, so I'll hit X to delete it. So now if I zoom in here, you can see there's also going to be a plant wherever the tree is because there's the plants and then there's the trees up here. So we're joining them all together with one join geometry. Now the problem with this is that the plant is in the same exact location, so to fix this, right down here on the plants, we can just change this seed value and just randomize the seed, so you can really change it to any value you want, just make it a different seed value from the seed value where the trees are. And now you can see there's going to be little plants here and there all over the weight painting. And then we can also turn the density max up a bit more, I could turn it up to like maybe a 3, so there's more of them, so you can now see there's little plants here and there. Now I do want to change the size of the plants, so here on the plants, let's go to this random value which will control the scale, and the minimum I want to turn to 1, and then the maximum I just want to turn to like a 1.3, so 1.3, so that they are a bit smaller. Now you can see the distance min here is quite big on the plants, and I don't need it to be that big. We turn this way up for the trees, but it doesn't need to be that big for the plants because the plants are smaller. So this distance min, I can turn to like a 0.1. Now there are quite a bit too many plants right now. So on the density max, I will turn this way down to like a 0.4 so that there aren't quite as many plants. And that might be still a little bit too many plants. So maybe turn it down to like a 0.03. All right, so that was a bit better. And we can also just go along here and we can paint in a few more areas where we want the plants to be. So just paint in a few more areas and there's just gonna be a few more of those plants. Maybe a few here and over there. All right, so let's click on the weight paint and we'll go back to object mode and we'll make this a bit smaller. And actually we can just go back here to the layout so we can see this in the full screen. And it's really starting to look like a forest or a forest meadow. And of course, if you wanna go over here to the modifiers, you can click on these buttons here to see the flowers and the grass, but you can see it is gonna be a bit laggy in the viewport, but the scene is really starting to come together now. I'm just gonna hide the grass and the flowers by clicking on those monitor icons just to hide them from the view. So let's press Ctrl S to save, and this will wrap it up for this part. So I hope you're enjoying the tutorial series, I hope you're easily able to follow along, and thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to watch a complete introduction tutorial series on Geometry Nodes, then definitely check out my Geometry Nodes for Beginners tutorial series, which is a six-part tutorial series completely free on my YouTube channel. I'll have the link to that in the description if you're interested. So in the next part, in part five, we're going to be creating the butterfly, and we will animate the butterfly's wings flapping, and then we'll be animating the butterfly just flying through the scene. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and the link will be in the description. So I hope for enjoying this, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.